Nothing fancy, reviewing the excellent little Keltec P3AT 380 caliber semi automatic pistol. You may have seen me shooting this little gun in my tactical clinic, that's what I call it, in the western U.S. desert, and I did come away impressed with the gun. This is on loan from its owner, thank you owner, and just every so often I will be lucky enough to take out a gun into the tactical clinic, put it through its paces, testing accuracy, reliability, and other characteristics as time and money allow, and availability of guns like this, uh, all of which seem... Not the availability, but time money always seem to be in short supply in my schedule. So I can't promise you I'll do that a lot. However, I did do it with a P3AT. So I can talk with a little more authority in this tabletop review, which indeed will complete my review of this gun. Let's get going. Nothing fancy is going to go down here. All my talking points, that keeps me organized, and I'll still forget to add some stuff. Let's start off with philosophy of use. How do I envision the P3AT being used? in a system. A system of course is our mode of carry with a concealed carry permit perhaps. Perhaps you're a police officer. Well first off let's start off with police officer. I see the P3AT being an outstanding backup gun. Ankle variety would be how I'd envision it being carried mostly. Undercover agents also a good backup gun. I would personally if I'm undercover would not use this as my primary. Little too underpowered for my liking. However, if you're a concealed carry permit holder, CCW, CCP, license permit holder, whatever, or an armed civilian and you decide to go armed, this might be a good primary gun. Why do I say primary? Because it would be comfortable, slim and carry, and super lightweight. I'll get to that. And because it has those characteristics, you'll find yourself carrying it without complaint. 24-7, 365, reference my obligation of carry video. I talk about that philosophy. Let's get going, though. That's a philosophy of use. Backup gun for armed professionals, perhaps a primary gun for a concealed carry permit holder, either kind. So, P3AT. How's the weight on this gun? Well, I'm not going to throw it on scale because I already know, it is, know what it is, and it's outstanding. This gun in 380 caliber... I think it holds 6 plus 1. We'll get to that. Safety check was complete. Not going to waste time on that. Showing you, that is. This gun, with a magazine in it, 9.2 ounces empty. That is amazingly light. By way of comparison, the outstanding Walther PPK, pretty much my reference 380 pistol, just by way of its proven background, weighs 21 ounces empty. So this weighs less than half of this. Amazing. Real excellent job on the weight, kel -Tec. And that's in part to its polymer frame. Excellent. How's the firepower on the P3AT? Uh, diminutive. It's not a lot. I think it's, what, 6 plus 1? So 7 rounds total in the P3AT. But I don't feel underarmed with 7 rounds with a gun of this size. Because the advantages I get in mobility, hmm, there's that mobility versus firepower argument again. The advantages I get in mobility, mobility are worth it. So, 6 plus 1, yeah, decent for this. And adequate for the size. Generally, I would prefer more. Uh, however, if I'm going to have more, I'm going to have to accept the larger form factor of a weapon. And in doing so, I'm going to have more weight and more bulk. Thus, my carry system changes, and the advantages of a gun this small, this tiny, this light are pretty much nullified. So, firepower, adequate for the size of gun. How's the durability and reliability? I'm going to talk about this one first. Well, while you saw me shoot this in the desert, and I did show you, I did not edit it out, you saw it jam. But keep in mind, this is a brand new kel P3AT, and just like the owner's manual says, it's expected to jam during the break-in period. This is not unusual for these tiny little pistols from kel -Tec. And I do have some trigger time behind them, not just this gun. P32s, this gun, they will just jam on you when they're brand new. And the manufacturer tells you as much. Once you run 100 or so rounds through them, actually it was a lot less than this gun. This gun actually just took a couple magazines before it straightened up and started being 100% reliable 
And at that time, it, it just rocked on. I mean, it was perfect. So the reliability, by the way, in the desert, I was shooting full metal jacket rounds. I was not shooting hollow points. So that is something you would have to determine for yourself if it is indeed going to be reliable with your hollow point loading. In my experience, the kel if they're reliable with FMJs, if you get a good high quality hollow point round, they will be reliable with a hollow point round as well. What's my preferred round in a 380 load? Uh, there's several good ones. A Golden Saber, Hornady XTP. I like the 90 grain Hydroshock. That's a proven load. Works pretty good. Cycles well. And no, I'm not going to cycle that through this gun. I don't have the money to do that. So, can't do it. I assume that it'd be quite reliable though uh, in that. Durability. Well, this is a carry gun. This isn't a gun you're going to go out and run in three gun matches in and compete IPSC with. So, I think it'll be very durable for its intended use. If you go out and shoot it every day and put thousands of rounds through it, you're probably going to find some problems. You're probably going to experience some breakages. And I'm just talking extemporaneously here. I mean, I could be wrong. But this is not a gun that's designed to be shot recreationally. This is a backup defensive pistol. That's generally what it's designed for. Now, does that mean you can't go out and shoot it and you have to baby it? Not at all. In fact, shoot it often. I'm just saying, you know, thousands upon thousands of rounds, you might have some issues with it. But again, I could be wrong with that. If you are a kel owner and you have put thousands of rounds through your gun, not just a couple hundred, I'm talking thousands, then post in the comments. Tell us what your experience is. Um, I suspect they're going to be pretty darn good, though, overall, in the category of durability and reliability. How about the accuracy? Well, that gets to the sights. Like I talked about in the desert, the sights on this gun are very rudimentary. They're very simple. I wish they were better. And against the Benchmark 380, the Walther PPK, they are inferior. The Walther th sights are indeed small, but they're very precise, and you can get great accuracy with them. I've shot one and a half inch groups with this gun at 25 yards. Got the targets to prove it. The Caltech P3AT, however, will in no way be that capable. Not that it's not that accurate, but the sights suck. And I kind of wish they would invest more time and uh, design energy in the sights. I know they intend this to be a close range weapon. That's what they're telling us by putting sights like this on the gun. However, I like options. I always like options. And for me, options in a 380 means perhaps sights, albeit very compact, very useful on the Walther PPK. So the Walther blows it away in terms of sight quality. But as you saw in the desert, close range, seven yards, this gun was very capable of putting rounds on target. And that was from a standing position in a windy desert. Put it on a bench rest and then I probably could have shown you even better what the gun's capable of, eliminating my own faults in shooting. So accuracy, more than adequate for its intended purpose. Uh, very capable at seven to ten yards, you betcha. It'll probably shoot a hole about like that reference my video. Granted, I had a couple flyers, but more or less, if I remember right, it was shooting pretty darn tight. That's pretty good for a gun of that sort. Ergonomics, how are they? Excellent. Magazine release is right there, right where I'd want it to be. However, like the caveat I showed you in the desert, be careful with that, because my grip was, I was accidentally releasing that magazine release during the course of fire. So somehow my thumb would come down and I'd push it, and that could kill you because then you've just popped your magazine and dropped it a micro inch where it won't cycle. You have an empty chamber and guess what? Nothing happens. Not cool. So be very careful of that if you own a kel of any variety with that type of magazine release. But I don't have a problem with it. It comes to, in my opinion, it's a training issue with me, not the gun. Uh, and it's simple. See how, and I'm kind of jumping ahead, but it's very simple. There's no levers or safeties or even a slide release of any kind. It's just a long double action trigger pull. Simple's good. I love that. So ergonomic for the intended purpose you bet. Yeah, it has a short grip, but it's a subcompact pistol. So your ring finger and your pinky don't have a place to stay that night. Oh well. 
they'll have to come back another day. Again, train with it. And practice. Just dry fire with it. That's a great way to train your muscles on how the gun's going to operate. I don't have a problem with ergonomics. By the way, the slide grooves right there are purposeful. It allows a good purchase on the slide. By the way, this gun was safety checked. It is empty. Not going to waste the time showing you on camera. So that gets to simplicity, ease of use, and field strip. Talked about simplicity already. All it is is a trigger to pull. Speaking of the trigger, how is that trigger pull? Well, I'm going to put in a snap cap because I don't like dry firing guns generally. Here's an empty magazine. Snap cap, which is a spring-loaded dummy cartridge. And the trigger is indeed a long double action pull. And like I've talked about maybe in my par car video, sometimes you have to practice with these to be accurate because it's real easy to throw your sight picture off during that long double action trigger pull. So stage it to about that point. Make sure you're maintaining your sight picture. Crank your round off. I find the trigger itself, yes, it's long, somewhat heavy, but crisp and let off. And it would be adequate for the gun. Meaning that if I don't have a safety lever on the gun, I want a trigger like this. I don't want a hair trigger, and I think it's totally safe carrying it like this. It has a firing pin block. Firing pin cannot be engaged to the sear unless the trigger is purposely pulled. Very simple. Field strip, uh, not super simple, but doable. You'll retract a slide, pull this, pull this uh, side piece out here, and you can take it off. Uh, I don't want to spend time showing you that, but it's adequate. Sorry, my dog's barking. Close the door. So, simplicity, you bet. Enough. How about accessories? Accessories for a carry pistol of this sort kind of refer it more than anything to what kind of holsters you can put in it. And I, I kind of mentioned this at the very first. I see this being an ideal ankle gun. Probably the largest size ankle gun that myself I would be comfortable with. I have tried ankle carry with Glock 26s, other guns, Walther PPKs, and I come away not liking it. It's too bulky and it requires a certain mode of dress to conceal it appropriately. However, the kel P3AT, I think, really lends itself to ankle carry. And it's a 380. It's not a 25 or a 32. It's a 380. Yeah, it's still underpowered, as are most handgun cartridges. But still, that's decent. And look how it rides in that Uncle Mike size 10 ankle holster. It's like perfection. 9.2 ounces, a little more with ammo in it. That's my holster, by the way, and I sewed on an extra magazine carrier there. And then that's your thigh, sta not your thigh, but your calf stabilizer there. This is actually a pretty good holster for the money. I've used it a lot. And I think the P3AT would excel at it. There's lots of holsters for the P3AT, in other words. So that's what I'm trying to say. Your carry options for this gun are numerous. And since it's so small, so compact, sl so slim, look how slim that gun is. That's going to be a very comfortable backup weapon or primary CCW, CCW weapon, if you choose. So I say your accessories are numerous. Um, the gun does come with two magazines from the factory, so that's cool. And I'd probably get a couple more, just to have in storage and to use. Depending on your situation, your loadout that day, you might want to carry more than just one backup magazine. just depends. So, I might suggest doing something with the sights. Maybe putting some high-vis sights on it of some sort, and maybe you can improve the sight picture. Again, I like options on my guns. I know this is a close-range weapon. However, options is good. Price. This gun's pretty affordable. And I'm looking at the side of what this owner paid, and that's the price right there, 270 That's pretty darn good for a 380 of this reliability, apparent reliability, weight, and adequate firepower, 270 <clears throat> Excuse me. That's pretty darn good. How's the track record? It's really hard for me to speak to that because I just have uh, about 150 rounds. I forget exactly how many I put through in the desert there through the gun. And reliable track record is a thing that's amassed over time. So it's very difficult for me to speak to that with any degree of authority. However, I have some other trigger time with the P32 
and that's been a very good gun. Again, getting back to the durability, this is not an IPSC race gun that I'm putting thousands of rounds through. This is a backup defensive weapon that I'll practice with occasionally to stay current and qualified with it. But I think the track record as years go by will prove it to be a very good high value defensive weapon choice. Out of time like I normally am. So that's a P3AT. I love the gun. I think it's excellent for the price. Get it while you still can. Carry it often. And hopefully you'll never have to use it. This is Nothing Fancy's review. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for the good ratings and all the help you guys give me. Much appreciated. We'll see you.